down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Yeah, friends. I'm so excited about this Airbnb. I know I'm trendy. I know that I'm a forerunner. I know that I put on the the Giants hat at the game or the Thunder hat. No, I don't. But I'm just saying I I try not to be a forerunner, but I am a forerunner on this Airbnb. Back in the studio, I had to bring him back. We had a couple cut a couple episodes on Airbnb landlord, connoisseur, great speaker, civil engineer, loving life, loving people serving the community of landlords and al i appreciate you being back on the show oh, I, it's it's an honor i love it here and uh so we're going to talk about a case study so you you just spoke this week it was a great I, i'm impressed some people have texted me that you know are hard to please and they said they enjoyed they would they call you a a professional speaker. <laughs> well, I got to look at my phone. A, a, a qualified speaker, right? Yeah. Scott Nutchello, a qualified speaker. Appreciate you, my friend. Uh, he has 300 units. He he owns about a um, 100 of himself and he manages about 250. He's a real estate uh, realtor broker. When he bought tickets for the class, I was like excited. I need to call him. Okay. And then he just texted me this morning and said, qualified speaker. It's cool, man. You were so passionate about everything, um, and you knew all the history. It was just a great class, and I'm glad that you came. And I know you're going to come back in April at Investor Weekend. I'm excited about that. But before we get to c- talk about that jazz, you, you had a case study that blew my mind. Uh, and so uh, we're in Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, we got the Cowboy Hall of Fame up yeah. in this mother. I drove you past it just so I could say I did. Even <laughs> I, though you're African American, I'm like, we got cowboys. There's, there's black cowboys. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a black rodeo. Yes, there is. In Oklahoma. Okay. And it's it's hot. It's popping. I bet. It's it's like packed. It's like. I've never been to it, but I I've, 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 I see Facebook po- posts of it. I know when the black cowboys are in town, they all got ten gallon hats. It's kind of cool. Um, so tell tell us about this case study of and you called it horsing around, horsing around, yeah. horsing around. Tell yeah. me about this. So I met this couple in um, St. Louis. I, I was talking Sharon there about Airbnb. And was uh, it a RIA? Was it a? Yeah, it was like a, a Mr. Landlord event. Mr. Landlord event. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Landlord uh, convention. Okay. And lady approached me afterwards, and and she asked me if I knew about Horse Motel. <laughs> <laughs> no tell, Horse Hotel? Horse Motel. That just sounds like under the border. Yeah, oh, man. Like things go on with animals. Anyway, she let's said, keep this focused. She said, yeah, I know about short-term rentals. I've been renting out my bunkhouse for the past 10 years on this website called Horse Motel. And I, I, I'm going to Google I, this up while you're talking. Keep going. I drew a blank there. I drew a blank. <laughs> And I think I, lo- I lost a lot of credibility because I didn't know Horse Motel with her. I could see it. Motel. You have credibility. You're an engineer. <sighs> you work on bridges and you yeah. build freaking Alcatraz. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. So, so <laughs> you got yeah. the clout. So she she she, she bought the course because she thought um, there's something to this Airbnb, even though it has more rooms under management than any hotel chain in the world. Yeah, she, totally. She figured she might as well give it a try. It might be. See, it's right there. You're looking at it. Yeah, so there's. I went to this horsemotel.com, dot <laughs> com, and it's a. There's every state is on here, or it seems like every state. I click on Oklahoma because that's where I'm from. Yeah. Tatted out Oklahoma, big time. That's how we do. See a a part a Pacho, Oklahoma, Claremore, Oklahoma, Dewey, Oklahoma, Edmond, Rock and D Ranch, Crystal Barrett. See, this is what I'm talking about. They have their own economy. Okay, and and you wouldn't know about this economy unless mm-hmm. you, unless you, you get you put your listing on there or you have a need. Okay, so that's one of my points about Airbnb. You, you, there's a whole other economy going above and beyond that landlords can't see because they're not in that economy, mm-hmm. and it's more lucrative than typical traditional landlording. Okay, back to horse motel. So. As you can see, there's very. So you met this gal. Yeah, this gal. There's, there's three of them in my neighbor. I mean, there's a couple in Oklahoma City. And the, the, you see the graphics on it. It's just it's like one, it's just one picture. It's this very old. Okay, so she turned you on to hotel horse hotel. With the, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's about seventeen listings in Oklahoma. That's pretty powerful for Oklahoma. So that's her expectation because she's been looking at that for ten years. 
So when I, when we got her onboarded to Airbnb, you know, and all those pictures, I, I told her you need 12 pictures minimum. Not one. And not one. And then, and then when she showed me to him, I rejected them all and said, you need professional photos, just like, a, a, like you're selling your house professional. Sure. So, and I agree. Everyone, yeah. you should hire a photographer, find a friend, do something. It's a hundred bucks. Yeah. Get it done. You need long exposures to get that wide yeah, lens, wide lens, not, not fish lens. <laughs> hey, hey, that's how you can buy one of those online for like $10. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's how I, okay, uh, keep going. Come on. Okay. So we, we rewrote her copy and everything and, um, got her up and going. Okay. And as soon as she went live within a couple of hours, she got her first booking. So that caused her to get a little nervous, you know? So she called me up and we got, we discussed it. And we, and we okayed it. We approved it. It was like a couple week book, couple weeks of, of um, booking straight. And what we realized was that up the street from her, um, Mars Chocolate, M and M folks. You have an M and M's. You know what I'm talking about? M and M's in Hershey, uh, yeah. uh, Pennsylvania. A new factory had been built in 2015 in St. Louis. No, this is we're we're in Kansas now. Okay, okay, Kansas. So we're in Kansas now, up the street in, to- in Topeka. Okay, Topeka, Kansas. Yeah, open up a new Mars chocolate factory. Okay, so she started getting business. So instead of renting t- her bunk for fifteen dollars a night per bed, <laughs> per horse, <laughs> that the stable use is extra. Wow. She was able, you know, get the seventy, eighty dollar per night um, long term bookings from per, you know professional person. Working, from the Mars, people that work in the, working at the Mars. So yeah. it's not has nothing to do with horse motel or it has horses. Nothing to do with horse motel. So now she's in the she's now she's in a international economy with horse motel people as well as business travelers, vacationers. There's people from California now on on bike tours and, and wine tasting tours staying at her place. That is an economy she would never get into if she was still with horse motel. So it's almost like a hostel. W- would that be the right way to? She has a, so yeah, this bunkhouse because you have wor- workers um, working. Well, how many as how ranchers. many units or how many beds are in a bunkhouse? So like she, to explain that. She's to me. got in her bunkhouse. She has eight beds, and then there's a little studio, separate studio as well. And she's see, she's selling a bed for eighty dollars a night. No, no, no. She has that studio going for eighty dollars a night. Okay, but she wouldn't be able to to get that amount. And she still rents her book bunkhouse separate. They're separate buildings. Okay. So, like, um, if you were if you were traveling, you your entourage would stay at the bunkhouse. You and your wife would stay at the studio. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah. Gr- and this also, and this is like a specific industry of just horses or blue collar or just workers yeah, or new ra- construction ranchers ranchers. Ra- ranchers. ranchers work with ranchers. Okay. And she was in that economy. And now she's in that economy as well as um, people riding taking bike tours across. Kansas. So the gist of this is like, don't be sheltered. There's a possibility for Airbnb in any endeavor. That's I mean, right. is that, is that, even if cool? you're even if you're in a rural area, okay, you'll you'll find your treasure trove more of your potential by by putting your listing on Airbnb. Okay, so I you know I am an investor. This is what I do. I am an educator, investor, and coach. So. I should like I'm hot and excited about condominiums. It just makes sense economically. I mean, I even thought about just renting out apartments around the world and Airbnb them. But I know when you sign a lease, there you can't sublet. But in my mind, I'm like I, I used to. Uh, to honest truth, I hated condos because it's like I hate HOA. Mm-hmm. It's just there's this. It seems like a scam to me that you're paying X amount of money and it's never quality of service. <laughs> so that's. I mean, I'm, I'm just being real. Like okay. that's why I don't like condos. Like, of course, I grew up in apartments my whole life, and I'm not a big fan of them. But then on this Airbnb, it's just the numbers work with condos, and I don't have to worry about maintenance because like on a, on a single family with short term rental. I don't have, you know, right. so should I be looking for stables? Should I, I mean, I mean, I'm being serious because I'm looking for condos. If like no. if before people would call me with a condo and I'd be like, yeah, okay, good luck. I, and I don't even know who to sell a condo to. So I don't even, yeah. I don't even wholesale. Them. But now you mentioned the word condo. I'm like, whoo. <laughs> no, this, I, I would not recommend. So condos in your area work for Airbnb, but most homeowners associations kind of frown on it. So I wouldn't direct you 
that shouldn't be your first choice unless it's that type of community that welcomes it. Okay. Your area is um, in Oklahoma well, City. Like we're a metro. Yeah. Or it, like a soft metro, I if, guess, or small if, metro. If, if you run a, a good operation that doesn't get complaints, you should be just fine. Okay. So any other case studies um, that we need to talk about? I mean, we're pretty much, it's only been 10 minutes. What else did you learn? What did this gal learn? Did her, what was her revenue? Give me some data about the horsing around stable thing. <laughs> I just love saying horsing around. Well, you know, she keeps re. re I, I ask her about that. She keeps reinvesting her um, her revenue, and, and she's increasing her her rates now as well because she's she was um, too low. So I believe she's up to eighty five dollars a night for that studio, and she's raised her rates on her bunk bed as well. But like, how often is it booked? I mean, what's her revenue? Yeah, the, when you go when you check on Airbnb for the Heartland Ranch, you can see that it is is um, booked out. Um, through November, I think, but books out months in advance. So, so um, she's cash flowing. She's cash flowing. She's on extremely something that she had nothing going on before. She had very little going on. Or before, with the right? ho- horse hotel, obviously, with yeah. that website, there's nothing going. on. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very true. little. It's very little. It, so it, the power of millions of dollars or bill. I mean, how much is Airbnb worth? Does anybody know? Yeah, I thought, I, I want to say thirty billion. Thirty billion. So the power of thirty billion of search engine optimization, yeah, and algorithms, and the, are because yeah. this horse hotel is getting no traffic compared to Airbnb. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. all right. So that's a great case study. I appreciate that. So I, you know, I did a little Oklahoma horse. You know, I'm Oklahoma in my blood now. <laughs> so you know, you could take a horse stable in a bunk house, bunk house. and convert that over to Airbnb. All right, let, listen, we got a couple more minutes here. Let get me into the one that you showed me that was a party. Okay. Three story. Okay. Cuz I know, I know we've all, you know, can you, what so we're doing two case studies. I'm sorry. I throw okay. this throw this out there for you. <laughs> we tried to practice these podcasts before we got rolling and I just threw in a, you know, an audible. Yeah. So tell me about that one. Where was that at? You stayed at it? And- so I was in St. Louis. That was in the fast factory di- district the industrial area of St. Louis. That's just all abandoned, just just abandoned warehouse after abandoned warehouse. Like Chicago Southside. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, like, I got some friends in Chicago that are buying these properties right now. Right. Okay. Right. So, it, someone needs to um, reimagine what to do because um, that industry is just not coming back. Yeah. But you have these. It's called Amazon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you got these big buildings with that are sturdy, that with open floor plans. Um. Yeah, brick, yeah, right? Brick that, and they look they, gorgeous on they the look inside. Gorgeous, and they're cheap. So this guy bought these. This guy facility, bought this guy bought warehouse one, space, warehouse set, space, with, and it's three levels. Three levels. He he lives up at the very top, his own little Trump Tower, the very top <laughs> Trump of this. Awesome. And he rents each level out to people doing bachelor and bachelorette parties on the weekends through Airbnb. He uses Airbnb to book these. Yeah, the book the whole floor. Like what's give me a number? How much is so, the cost? I'm going to have a freaking so, drug out party <laughs> at this warehouse that's all pimped it's, out. No. It's like thirty, thirty or thirty five dollars per per person. Oh yeah, that's my language. And you know, you can have a grip of twenty people or so per, per party per per floor. So let me do the math. I got a calculator. Do, do the math. Yeah, thirty five times. How I many? What's the average? You know, twenty. Say twenty people, 20 people? Per, per party. So seven hundred bucks per floor. You got three floors going times. Oh, so twenty one hundred. And a day, a day, or a night, a Friday. Yeah, yeah, per night. Do people mingle from floor to floor? And he tries to not have that happen. Is there accessibility for each floor individually? He he has a way of controlling it, but it was flimsy. He's he's trying to improve that. Right. Just, I'm a promoter, so that yeah. I, mean, I used to do concerts. So I, I was helping him with the systems, like um, you know, make um, a red room, a red lines on the floor, so people can find. Oh, that's a great idea. Things, you know, you know, it, stickers are really inexpensive now. St- Those stickers. floor floor things, floor uh, also uh, decals. He, he needs information on, so people can look on their smartphones about where they are in his building, and 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 know the layout of each floor. So this guy is super savvy. Uh, so so how, how'd you meet him? Gonna, how do you know him? Well, I saw his his Airbnb listing in in St. Louis while I was in town. So. I, I Ubered out there because I wanted to stay out there. So you actually booked it? I actually booked it. Now, he has other rooms inside there are like individual rooms, too. So he has um, he, he partitions them off so that they're their own little room inside this big bungalow uh, or high, high ceiling. So villa. But the ceilings only go up like the walls only go up eight feet. But the ceiling goes up to maybe 20. 
Okay. So the airspace, I guess. Like yeah, a, you got like, lots of airspace, but you got lots of privacy for, for your room. You have your own door. Now, how about the the restroom facilities? Yeah, so there's like one or two is a common, you know. Right. So because so, you're having a party, everyone's using the same restroom, just like at a house party. Sure, normally. Okay. No, but for the Airbnb customer, so yeah. could someone be renting that that loft or room or whatever, and then the party's still going on on another floor? Yeah, absolutely. So you don't. The reason he has it out there in his party is so people who aren't um, don't want a quiet space. So like you don't go there for a quiet space. Here I go again. I'm Mr. Entrepreneur here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Find a warehouse. That's right. Check. And I can find one, and they were and pretty reasonably priced. And like I've you know I used to be involved in the bridal business, so this is like up my alley. Yeah. Per se of wedding facilities, there's always a need for them. People want the newest and greatest, or something no one else has never done before. Yeah. So you could take a facility, and I didn't never thought about putting it on Airbnb. Yeah, put it on Airbnb. Yeah, so but it had, does it have to have accommodations for sleeping though? Yeah, you throw some, you put some beds in there, <laughs> some air beds on the ground. You like that, throw some air. That's what Airbnb now, stands so for. So he has he has nice furnishings. Yeah, I saw the photos yeah, were outstanding. He's got nice furnishing, nice um, 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 sheets and things, and he um. What he needs to do is, in addition to that, because they're all related to weddings, is you know uh, get some get some fees from the DJs as well to promote them to have turnkey DJs. Yeah, or turnkey like like any wedding facility. Hey, we use this caterer, we use That's this right. cake person, we use That's this right. uh, music guy. Oh man, you're talking. Are you talking ancillary income? Steve? Ancillary. Yeah, I can't even say the f word. I can't even spell. It. Anyway, <laughs> don't slap me again. <laughs> all right, so that those are two good case studies yeah. that are just random. Now, if you just ran the numbers, if you ran the numbers. Per, per night, per per week. Well, that's going to be on the weekend, probably. Because yeah, people fr- are not getting married on right. Tuesday. Right. So, so you got a a, a fr- you know party on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Party Saturday, Sunday. So you can have two two sets of groups. So consider booked all those three days, three three nights a week minimum, at at those rates that you got going. Right. Twenty one. And then you run it up times run up through the year. And you can see it's a grip of money. No, this is so good. It sounds too good to be true. City's not cracking down on this. I mean, does he have to have security? I mean, there's got to be some sort of sanctions. Like he's throwing freaking orgies. No, I'm just, uh, I'm just. Well, I mean, it, think about it. logically. Yeah. There's a bunch of people getting together, getting having a good time, yeah. having a party. Yeah, things happen. It's, it's going to happen at a bachelor party. Whatever's, whatever's happening at a bachelor party is happening. At, he's just providing a service, providing a service, and making it safer because people aren't driving around. Well, I, I, I agree from his angle, yeah. but I mean, I, you know, the city hotels are not getting the fees for that, you know, and I, I mean, I commend, you know, seeing a need and providing it. And I know there's a lot, it's probably, it's pretty inexpensive yeah. to, and it's a safe place. It's a safe place. And I, I agree. It's like, you know, people do after proms and you right. know, people do Halloween, churches right. do Halloween events to keep kids off the street from getting hit. That's exactly right. And, and nabbed. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree the positive side of it. And then I, you know, as the, the political climate taxes and sanctions and they're trying to shut down Airbnb and they shut down Uber in Austin, which is just terrible because yeah. I love Uber. Yeah. I mean, it's just the, everyone that picks me up. I'm just they're happy that they have a side hustle. Right. You know, and, and you know, I understand the taxi people are pissed off, too, just like. You know, Walmart is scrapping against Amazon. But what's the end result is that we're getting cheaper things and it's becoming a competitive market. And that's what we need in society. That's that's right. So innovate. Don't stop, hey, innovate. Stop, stop, stop Don't complaining. hate innovate. Yeah, that's right. you, should call, you should trademark it. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> innovate. Don't hate. Innovate. Don't hate. All right. Al, it's always been a pleasure, man. I love you as a friend. And I'm glad that you came to OKC. Yeah. Hopefully. I know you didn't get to see any of the tourism stuff because we've been grinding it out but seeing the studio this plushed out studio is enough man you got your rc car right there <laughs> that's, that's that's my goal don't call me out on the radio <laughs> I, I, i'm like 15 pounds short still oh this is and good. actually i got three we- i don't know it's gonna be tough but uh you can be on a men's calendar <laughs> with my booty <laughs> all right man uh anyway so people want to know more about airbnb yeah. and and you have a very reasonably pri- i mean i think i i you know people yell at me all the time bro you're, you you give your books away they're twenty dollars your your courses are only a couple hundred dollars 
you know, yeah, I got 80 hours in it and people don't realize what it takes to bring a product to market, the hours, the sacrifice, how many Airbnbs did you go to to craft this, you know, Airbnb for landlord course. Right. And, you know, I, I, I'm amazed that people don't buy it. It's only $200. I bought it and yeah. I love it. And yeah. I got two units already. Yeah. And you've been jamming me up for two years. I mean, as <laughs> soon as I bought the course, yeah, uh, it's been Man, the videos, they're on there. And I, the, the one thing that's just worth $200 is the guest or the welcome packet. I call it the welcome book for okay. me. Okay. I don't know. What, what do you call it? The I call it the guest manual. The guest manual. All mm-hmm. right. That's a little bit more savvy. Yeah. Than, you know, that's all right. That's than all a right. welcome book. All right. So how do people buy this thing if they if they really want to get an Airbnb? And, and another question I got last night, too. Well, I don't have any Airbnbs. Okay. So how do you, how do, in the future? Okay, there's there's a man. That's you know, it's another, an objection. Like, that's another you episode. can't afford two hundred. Okay, another. <laughs> hey, so how do people get this? They they get that. They go to Airbnb Landlord dot com. So that's A I R B N B. Yes, just like the website Landlord dot com. com. Yeah. And just so you know about Al Williamson, he was number eight podcast on Bigger Pockets. Yep. great contributor. Uh, you have a lot of fans, and I'm just excited that I can. Uh, jump on your coattails. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> Whatever you do, buy assets so you can air beam beam. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets.